and welcome to Overtime, brought to you by KingsCast at www.kingscast.net. I'm Keith Korluk. And I'm Chris Kalaszewski. That's right, Kings fans, with the offseason in full gear and the past season now just a fading memory, Chris and I decided to assemble some of the brightest minds in local media covering the Los Angeles Kings and have a little roundtable discussion. Talk about the season that passed, and the future. We were lucky enough to put together an exclusive group of journalists, authors, and bloggers from the worlds of online and print media. Here is our lineup. Hi, I'm Gian Matsuda. I write for FrozenRoyalty.net. I'm Dennis Bernstein, and I write for The Fourth Period. I'm Charles E. Smith, Jr. I'm the creator of Inside Sports, and I also write for HockeyTalk.biz. Hi, I'm Brian Kennedy. I write for Inside Hockey, and I also wrote a couple of hockey books, Growing Up Hockey and Living the Hockey Dream. My name is J.P. Hornstra, and I write for the Inland Valley Daily Bulletin. I'm Matt Wrights. I'm the Editor-in-Chief from View From My Seats. That's right, so King's Cast is proud to present the Los Angeles Kings Postseason Roundtable. All right, so uh, when the Kings first signed Terry Murray, a lot of pundits out there thought that he was like a rebuilding coach. Uh, the question is now, I mean, you know, we do had to have a 101-point season, which is definitely an improvement. Uh, but is Terry Murray capable of coaching the Kings to a Stanley Cup? Well, actually, if you look at the record, mm -hmm. he did go to the final with Philadelphia in 97. Yep. Now, granted, they did have a monumental meltdown when they got to the finals against Detroit, mm -hmm. but... He's capable of getting them there. The question is, is the, the coach that's capable of actually getting them over the hump. With a team like the Kings, though, I think if he can just get them to the final, uh, that'll be fine for now. Let's just see a final, then we'll reevaluate after that. And I think he's done a great job building chemistry in the in the room. I mean, two years ago, everybody's been around the team knows that chemistry was awful. They were just veterans on the way out looking for a paycheck. Sean Avery was there, and he came in <laughs> and built great chemistry. So I think there's a lot of respect for the coach in the room. And given that, I think he could take them on. I don't think his, I mean, what was his biggest flaw this year? I think five out of six people think they play Jonathan Quick too much. Jonathan Bernier's on the team next year. He's not going to play 72 games next year quick. Mm -hmm. So I think with that said, I, I, look, I personally like the guy. And we play favorites. We do play favorites in the media. I like the guy. I think he can get there. And he's smart enough. And he's a teacher. And, and you see that in practice when he's on the ice with even Kopey and Brown. He teaches guys, and, and I just think that he's built that chemistry. He deserves to, to take this team as far as they can take. Coaching is not this team's problem, to be quite honest. I mean, you think back to two seasons ago, you had, you had Mark Crawford, and he was the antithesis of what this team needed in terms of leadership <laughs> and behind the bench. I mean, he screamed at everybody. He has no patience for young players. And like Dennis just said, he, he's complete opposite of Murray in that he's not a teacher. Mm -hmm. He's And this, it's, no, it's no surprise that... What he's done is, every time he's had success, because he had nothing but stars on his team, pretty much, uh, when, he, when he has a challenge of trying to work with young players, he's a complete failure in a lot of ways. But you look at Terry Murray, the, the biggest thing was this team needed a teacher. This team needed someone who would stress defense, would, would help build chemistry. He's done, he's been fantastic on all, all three of those levels. Um, yeah, playing quick too much was a mistake. Playing Jones over Drewski was a mistake. However, the other things that he's done, to me, almost completely overshadow those, those two problems. He does have a way of getting the guys on message, and if you go around the locker room after a game, you, who knows what they say in between periods, of course, right? I mean, I think the fans probably imagine we know more than what we really know about what's said. But when, what they say to us after the game is always consistent. If one guy says it's all about team, 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 the guy on the opposite side of the room says it's all about team, 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 which tells me they're listening to what he has to say, Murray, on a given night. You go to the press conference after, what does he say? Team, team, team. Whatever the message is, it's consistent. Now, is the message the right one? And is that the message that's going to get them to the next step is the question. You guys talk about him as a teacher. He is a very even-tempered fellow. I was actually hoping for a little more kicking over of trash cans, say in March. But you know what? Watching Vino in the playoffs kind of taught me a lot, because I thought Vino was a more sort of a fiery guy. But he, he didn't strike me that way. He's a very even-tempered fellow. Everything he said when they lost um, to go behind 2-1 or for the Kings to go up 2-1. It was, it was an even message when they were winning. It was an even message. And I kind of reflected back on Murray at that point and thought, hmm, maybe it's just about picking what you want 
and then sticking with that. But is team, 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 we're all in this together, is that enough for the next step or do you have to have more of a, you know, a surge or... or, or who the big guy is that they bring in to, you know, get the scoring going. Is that guy, whoever that might be, is he going to be a team, team, team guy or is that even the message you want to give a guy like that? I think all those answers are going to play themselves out over the next couple of years. I mean, the expectations are going to be going up, not just for the players, but for Murray also. And as this team goes forward, there's going to be some refining, maybe, you know, shaping, tinkering a little bit here as far as the personnel, a little bit on the back end, a little bit on the forward lines, you know, doing, doing some tinkering just to get to that next step to where they can even think about winning the Stanley Cup. They're pretty close. Uh, and don't forget, the one irreplaceable player on this team is Drew Doughty. Drew Doughty's a defenseman, Terry's a former defenseman. Mm -hmm. I, I, the guy's got to take credit for it. He doesn't take credit as a coach. I mean, I tried to get him all year to take credit for this team. He wouldn't do it. So with respect to Drew, you got to give him the credit because, you know, Terry, I'm sure, took him through the paces and said, this is what you should expect. I was there. I played on a great team in Philadelphia. Um, here's what you need to take your game to the next level. And I'm sure those conversations happened all season because Drew came back a new man. I didn't recognize him in training camp. He lost that baby fat. He got in shape. And he had, you know, we, you know, a couple guys here at the table have a Norris vote. I had him for the Norris, number one. So I think Terry's got to take a lot of credit for that. So I, I think, like everybody else kind of says, is, you know, there's not going to be a change here. And it won't be any time soon unless there's a, another 79-point season in the offing next year. Then Let's go back to Terry Murray for a second because this, this has come in over Twitter a few times. Uh, everybody wants to know what's up with the line combinations. You know, he does switch it up quite a bit. Is, is it the fact that, you know, we don't really quite have a complete hockey team yet, you know, with Justin Williams on the first line? No I mean, got to move it around. No or a lot of guys got hurt this year, too. Mm -hmm. You look at that, it's one in, one out, one in, one out, almost all the way through to the Olympic break. Williams missed five games early. Smith missed missed that period up till Christmas. Then he comes back, and immediately after that, Williams is out again with a broken leg. That was two months or whatever, so... He kind of was forced to do that, and then by the time they got into March and that whole sort of slumpy, crummy post-Olympic um, thing, it was it, he just had to mix something up to get some guys going. And I gotta say, if you look at any, all 30 NHL teams, they all change line combinations. Fans gotta get over that, quite mm -hmm. honestly. They just make way too much of it. I think people wanna see, as fans, and I can't say I blame them, they wanna see players together that they think will play well together. The problem is, that's not necessarily what's best for the team. Better teams, teams that are contenders, teams that are successful in the playoffs, they don't need to change line combinations that often. They've, they've got players who, who are established and going to work well together. Teams that are still building, like the Kings, even though they made the playoffs, they're still building, are still going to have to go through these growing pains. And so you're going to get juggling of lines. So people got to get over it, quite honestly. Yeah. Look at what the Canucks yeah. did in game four. Yeah. <laughs> Put Michael Samuelson up on right. the top line and boom. There's a point of reference here. Fans of the Kings see San Jose, see Heatley, Marlowe, and Thornton. Mm -hmm. They see Anaheim, they see mm -hmm. Ryan, right. Perry, and yeah. Getzlaff. Where's our guys? I think that it's a rare occasion when you get three great guys together that, that play like that and produce like that. It, it just doesn't happen with those teams. Exactly. Well, most of those great lines, though, they are, when you look at it and you really break it down, a lot of them were two really great players and one guy yep. who was really, really lucky. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> If any fan sat down in October and I told you 101 points and a six seed, they'd be like, okay, I'll sign right now. And give my firstborn away, too. You know? Alright, so that's it for this installment of the Postseason Roundtable. I hope you enjoyed it. We will be back yet again in the next coming days. I'm Keith Korniluk. And I'm Chris Kalaszewski. And thank you for watching Overtime by Kings Cast.